Well, it's just a start. We have a lot of decorating to do to make it just right. Oh, it's so sunny and bright. It's perfect. And you already have the crib. So, here's my idea. I want to put a little bookshelf over there and get a rocking chair so when she gets older, I can read to her while she's falling asleep. Now look what I just got. Pretty fancy, Mom. Want me to show you how to use it? Are you kidding? I got this thing all figured out. I even have your baby pictures on here already. Look how cute you were here sleeping with the blanket and that I made. You know, today we don't put blankets in the crib no matter how cute they are. And we have to lay the baby down to sleep on their back every time. Today? Don't be silly. A baby's got to stay warm. You don't want your baby to get cold. And I always put you on your tummy. Mom, this is important. You've heard of SIDS, right? Oh, yes. That's when a baby dies unexpectedly during sleep and doctors can't find an explanation. Right. Sudden infant death syndrome. At our birthing classes, we learned there are a lot of different things we need to do to reduce the risk of SIDS and other sleep-related causes of infant death, such as accidental suffocation. Now, for most of you, this is your first baby. And you might think that putting the baby to sleep in a crib is as easy as just sticking them in there. Remember this, safety starts with getting a safe crib, but there's a lot more to it. Before you put the baby in it, who knows what goes in a crib? I know, a sheet. A blanket. Soft bumpers. A teddy bear. One of you is right, and the rest are eh, wrong. Over the past 20 years, researchers have learned a lot about safe infant sleep. Besides the baby, a fitted sheet in a safety-approved crib is the only thing you need. No loose bedding, no bumpers, no pillows, no teddy bears, and no blankets. So how does the baby stay warm? Good question. A one-piece sleeper like this or like this is all the baby needs at sleep time. What you dress the baby in should be appropriate for the room's temperature. But my grandmother just crocheted us a baby blanket. I'm sure it's beautiful. And you can use it to decorate your baby's room, just not inside or draped on the crib. And remember, it's been a long time since you were born, so your parents and grandparents may not know all the most recent safe sleep recommendations. <coughs> Oh, look who it is, our special guest, baby Juliana. Oh. I see you already have her in a one-piece sleeper. Now, when she's tired and you've soothed her, you'll lower her down into the crib. The important thing is that your baby is always put down to sleep on his or her back. Around four to six months, babies start rolling over on their own, and that's fine. You don't need to turn the baby back over. Just remember to always put the baby down on his or her back at sleep time. And that goes all the way until the baby is one year old. But what if she spits up or something? Couldn't she choke? Actually, there's no evidence that babies are more likely to choke if placed on their backs for sleep. So you should feel confident that putting a baby to sleep on his or her back every sleep time is the safest thing to do. Check it out. Marco brought home this bassinet to keep in our bedroom. For the first couple of months, the baby will sleep right here in our room next to where we sleep. Oh no, Jellybean, you're gonna want that baby sleeping right next to you in bed for those feedings through the night. Actually, that's another thing we learned in our class. It's best to breastfeed, it reduces the risk of SIDS, and of course has other health benefits too. But they also told us that if we bring the baby into bed to breastfeed, it's important to make sure to put the baby in a separate sleep area a safety-approved crib, bassinet, or play yard right next to where we're sleeping to help with feeding through the night. Our instructor said that bed sharing actually increases baby's risk for SIDS, not to mention increasing the baby's chance of suffocating or being fatally injured. This could happen if one of us rolls on top of the baby or if the pillows or bedding get on top of the baby or if the baby gets trapped between the walls and the bed. Mom, listen. They told us that doing these things I'm talking about reduces the risk for SIDS and accidental suffocation. It's safer for my baby. I don't know why things have to change all the time. According to you, I seem to have done everything wrong. But you and Richie still turned out fine. Mom, you did a good job with us, and we did turn out fine. But you know, babies and families we don't even know died during sleep time. Since doctors have been telling people about the latest safe infant sleep practices, a lot fewer babies have died from SIDS, about half as many. And if making simple changes, like not using a blanket or laying the baby on her back will keep your granddaughter safer, you'll want to do it, right? 
You sure are developing a mother's instinct, honey. I know things change. I'll do it the new way. Because my new granddaughter is gonna grow up to be an amazing woman, just like her mother. It's your father. Hi, ladies. Hey, Dad. I was just showing Mom the baby stuff. Sorry to interrupt the tour, but I just found some great new info on Safe Sleep for Infants. That's great, Dad. Actually, Mom was just telling me about the latest Safe Infant Sleep recommendations. Here at the National Institutes of Health, we're always working to learn more about Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS, and other sleep-related causes of infant death. Over the past 20 years, we've learned a lot and health education has led to a 50% decrease in SIDS in the United States. But unfortunately, there are still babies dying. So it's very important for everyone to know how to make the infant's sleep environment safe to reduce the chance of infant sleep death, such as SIDS or accidental suffocation, from happening. That means telling grandmothers, friends, babysitters, anyone who's caring for an infant, and making sure they understand how important it is to follow safe sleep recommendations. We want to make sure that everyone knows that the baby should be placed on his or her back to sleep for every sleep time, including nap time. The baby should be placed on a firm sleep surface with nothing else in the sleep area no toys or soft objects, no blankets or loose bedding, and no pillows. And that the baby should sleep in the same room with the parent, but not in the same bed. As a mother of four, I know it can be a challenge to help the grandparents and other caregivers understand the importance of learning today's safe infant sleep practices and doing them every time but taking the time to teach these things can make all the difference. For more information, please visit the Safe to Sleep website at safetosleep.nichd.nih.gov.